Well, this short tutorial is going to look at one of the most useful SOPs in Houdini, but one of the probably one of the least used, and that's the Ray SOP. And the Ray SOP is incredibly useful both for modeling and for transferring attributes from one object to another. And I thought I would do a tutorial which looks at two or three different uses for the Ray SOP. And the first use uh, we're going to look at is in modeling. And the race hop can be useful in modeling for making one piece of geometry conform to the shape of another piece of geometry. And as an example, I'm going to create an object which consists of a box shape with a tube coming out of it. So it's a combination of a box and a tube. Uh, but it's going to be a single object and it's going to be set up so that we can subdivide it uh, without creating invalid geometry that creates problems uh, during subdivision. And I've got uh, the scene set up here, so I've got our box, and we're going to need a fair amount of divisions for this to work. So uh, I think here we've got uh, nine divisions by nine divisions by nine divisions. And then I've just selected the edges here of part of this of the of the box in the middle and I'm going to convert this edge loop into a circle and the way I'm going to do that is using the ray sop and I've already created a tube here and we can see this tube roughly conforms to the size of that selected set of points and let me rate lay down a, a ray sop and what the race op does is it takes points from one set of geometry and it projects them onto the points or onto the surface rather of another piece of geometry. So the first input here is for the geometry we want to transform. So let me connect uh, the box. And the second input is for the geometry we're going to project onto. So let me attach the tube. And at the moment nothing is happening. Uh, but let me first of all select those edge points. Those are going to be uh, the points that we're going to want to transform. And there are two ways in which the ray sop works. We can either use the minimum distance method or we can use the project rays method. And we're going to come to the minimum distance method in a moment. So what the ray sop does is it takes each point in the incoming group, in this case, these edge points and if we're using the project rays method it sends out a ray along the direction of the vector given here it sends out that ray and it sees whether it hits the surface of this second piece of geometry and if it does then it transforms the point uh, that we're dealing with so that its location is it at that hit point that, that's what it does by default when you have this uh, checkbox here enabled. Now by default this ray direction is defined by the normals of the points and at the moment we don't have any normals set up on this box and that's why this isn't doing anything and in fact in this case we don't really want the normals. The normals here would point straight up which wouldn't be very useful. So let me delete the channel here uh, and what we want really is for each point to send out a ray which points sort of outwards from the center so that it's going to project out towards the surface of this tube. Now fortunately there's a very easy way to set this up because one of the local variables that's available here in the ray sop is $tx, $ty, $tz which represent uh, the x, y, and z coordinates of each of the points we're going to be looking at. So if I was to put in here dollar $tx and then in the z direction dollar $tz like so, that is going to look in a direction which sort of fans out from the center. And we can see now, if we have a look, uh, and it may be a bit hard, let me switch to wireframe mode, it'll be easier to see. We can see that we've now moved those points so that they are conforming roughly to the shape of that tube. 
And to prove that that's worked, uh, let me just press select uh, and two for points. I'm going to select this point in the middle. I'm going to select four to convert that into primitives. And then I'm going to press shift G to expand that selection. And we can now see we've got all of those uh, polygons that are inside the tube. And then let's try a poly extrude. And that should allow us to lift up that central section. And we can see that it's uh, more or less the right shape. And let's just put in a couple of edge loops here just to make sure it's slightly nicer when it's subdivided. And then let's add a subdivide SOP, like so. And we can see that's producing a, a reasonably nice tube shape coming out of the top of that box with geometry that subdivides pretty well. Now you might want to play around with this a bit. You might want to, for example, expand this central section so that it's a bit, that the geometry is a bit more evenly distributed here and equally here. Expand, uh, scale out some of these uh, points here so that the transition from the circular to the square shape is more natural. But uh, just with the race up, we can get something that's quite useful as the basis for our uh, geometry to model with. So that's one very useful use of the ray sop. Another use for the ray sop is as a kind of sophisticated version of the attribute transfer sop. And for those of you who've seen the, the videos on the attribute transfer sop, you know that what it does is it takes attributes from one object and it transfers them to the points of another object. And the ray sop can do something similar. And I've got a, another example scene set up here which demonstrates that. So in this case we've got a grid which is going to be the thing that we're going to be transferring attributes to. And we've got a sphere and in fact I've created that as a separate object so that I can move it around like so. Uh, and then I'm object merging it in here and making sure it's transfer, transformed into this object. And then we've got our ray sop. And this is set up in a fairly similar fashion to the last use of the ray sop. In this case, we're going to project rays directly upwards in the y direction, because obviously the sphere is directly above the grid. And I've turned off the transformation of points. So in this case, the points are not going to move. But instead, I've enabled uh, this item here, which is point intersection distance. And this means, let me bring up uh, a details view. This means uh, that we have a distance attribute that will be created on each of the points of the grid and that will tell us how far away that sphere is. And for the most part it's going to be a distance of zero which means that there's no hit uh, because for most of these points here in the grid the ray is going to project upwards and it's not going to hit the sphere. And in that case this distance attribute is going to be zero but in some cases you can see that we do have a distance attribute, which means that uh, the sphere is directly above those points. And there are a couple of ways uh, to convert that into some useful attributes. So in this case, what I've done is just created a point group uh, called below sphere, group of points, and I'm using an expression dollar dist is greater than naught. So this is going to be a group of all of those points which are lying directly below the sphere. And in fact, you can see them all highlighted there. And then I'm using a color swap uh, using that below sphere group. And I'm just adding some red point color. So we can see that that color is on the points that are directly below the sphere. And if I now move the sphere around, we can see that those points follow the sphere. So that's a way of, of grabbing information uh, from the sphere. Well, in this case, actually, just determining whether the points are below the sphere or not. Uh, I should mention that there's a second way to achieve the same thing. So let me turn off that. Uh, because the RaySop has a built-in mechanism to create groups here, we can create a point group. And we can see by default it's got Ray hit group as that group. And this is going to be uh, the point, uh, all of the points uh, where they lie beneath the sphere, where there's some hit. So we should be able to just 
uh, delete this group here and then add the ray hit group and we should get exactly uh, the same effect. So that's a way of detecting uh, whether a point is uh, below an object using the ray sop. And as an example of a similar use of the ray sop, uh, I've now got uh, a piece of geometry here. Uh, I've called it UV wall. And all it is is a grid, and I've projected some UV coordinates on it. And then I've set up this UV quick shade so that we've got this mandrel picture on the grid. And what I want to do is to use the ray sop to transfer UV attributes from this grid onto the sphere and then project the mandrel project uh, picture onto the sphere. Uh, so here's the sphere and I've already brought in that grid as an object and I've connected it to the ray sop. Now as before, as with the situation where we, were, where we were detecting whether a point was under the sphere, in this case I don't want to transform the points. And I've got my rays shooting out in the minus x direction because that is the direction that the, sphere, that the wall is from the point of view of the sphere. And in this case I'm going to use uh, this capacity here at the bottom of the ray sort parameters which is import attributes from hits. So let me enable that and if we have a look here on our object merge uh, we can see that we've got a vertex UV attribute on this wall. So that's what I want to import. So here if under vertex attributes if I now select texture UV like so what this is going to do is for every single point on the sphere it's going to shoot out a ray and that's going to hit this wall and it's going to collect the UV attribute at that point and store it on the point here. So the result is going to be that we're going to get UV attributes on these points on the sphere. Uh, and we should see here, in fact it's off the bottom of the, the screen, let me see whether I can move it up so that you can see it. Uh, we can see here we've got UV attributes. And to prove that they're there, I'm going to lay down a UV quick shade, like so. And I'm going to set it up with the mandrel picture. Like so. And what we should see now is that more or less that sphere is reflecting reflecting the picture that lies behind it on the wall and if I move the sphere around we can see that those UV coordinates do indeed represent the UV coordinates that are on the wall behind the sphere. So that's one example of using the ray sop to collect attributes from a second piece of geometry. And for the final example of the use of the ray sop, I'm going to deal with the situation where you want to project some geometry onto another piece of geometry. And a classic case of this is where we've modeled something like a, a plant, for example. In this case I've got some very rough looking ivy that I've modeled here using curves and a polywire sop. And we want to project them onto something else. In this case I've got a pillar represented by this polygonal tube. So how do we go about using the ray sop to project this ivy onto our pillar? Well, let's have a go. And I've already set this up so that uh, we've got the pillar object merged into our scene. And let me lay down the ray sop. And wire in the ivy geometry here in the first input and the pillar in the second input. And in this case, I think we probably would need to transform it along the z-axis. So let's delete these channels and make this the z-axis. And we can see that that has been projected onto our pillar. But we've got a problem uh, because 
the original geometry, of course, has some thickness, as a piece of ivy would have, but once it's been projected, all of those points uh, are projecting onto the pillar and our geometry is becoming flat. Uh, and that isn't going to do any good. So we need to have a different, slightly more sophisticated approach. And to solve this problem, what we're going to need to do is use the lattice SOP. So let me just lay down a lattice SOP. And a lattice SOP is a way of deforming geometry by taking another piece of geometry, and normally what you use is, is a, a lattice, a square box. Uh, and you look at the square box in one situation, you then transform the square box into another situation, and you use those two versions of the box to deform the primary piece of geometry. There's a second option, however, which is to use points, and that's what we'll be using today, and it will probably make a little bit more sense once we actually start using it, so I won't describe it further. Uh, and what we need to do is to lay down, uh, let me just disconnect this ray sop for the moment, is we need to lay down a grid. And let's give it uh, plenty of points. I just want to template this ivy so that we can see it. And we want our grid to be in the same plane as the ivy. So we want it on the XY plane. And we want to have plenty of points in our grid. So let's say 40 by 40, let's say. So we've got plenty. And we also want it to be quite close uh, to that ivy, like so. In fact, let me have a look here, and we can we can move it like so, so that it's just on that ivy there. Just want it to be right next to the ivy. Right, that seems to be okay. So this grid is going to be the thing that we're going to use in the lattice sop. So what we're going to do is transform the grid and then use that to deform the ivy. So we need two versions of the grid for our lattice sop. So let's just uh, find the lattice sop. So the lattice sop has three inputs. The first input is the geometry we want to deform. So let's add in our ivy in this case. The second input is what it calls rest geometry. So let me put in the, the basic version of our grid. And then the third input is called deformed geometry. So this is going to be the grid in a different form. And indeed, the form we're going to have here is the grid transformed using the ray sop. So I'm going to stick the grid into the first input of that ray sop. And let's visualize the ray sop. Go back to the perspective view. Uh, and we can now undo the... So we can see that uh, by default what's happening is this rather weird projection of some of the points of the grid onto the uh, onto the uh, onto the pillar there. And that's because at the moment we're using project rays and we're using it in the in the uh, Z direction, which is why this is happening. But in fact what we want to happen is for this to wrap itself around the pillar. Uh, and we can do that by using the other main method of the ray sop, which is this minimum distance. What this is going to do is take our grid and it's going to paste it, if you like, onto our pillar. So each of the points of the original grid is going to be moved to the nearest point on the pillar geometry. And this is going to be useful when we come to deform the ivy. But there's something we need to do first, I think, which is to make sure our grid corresponds a little bit more closely to the shape of the ivy. So let me template the ivy again and have a look at our grid. Uh, see why that ivy isn't showing up. Yes, it is. There. So we can, we want to transform our grid so that it's a, a 
little bit more the same size as that ivy, so that'll do. Uh, something a little bit more like it. And then when we transform it onto the onto the pillar here, uh, it's going to be a little bit more uh, equivalent in terms of the size. Now, there are a couple of controls which allow us to affect the way that that grid is being projected onto the pillar. In fact, we don't really need to use them in this particular case, but I'll just demonstrate them. The scale here is a slider which takes you from no deformation of the grid or no change in the point position up to a maximum change in the point position. Uh, the lift further deforms uh, the geometry in the direction of the normals that it's inheriting from the underlying geometry from the pillar here. Uh, so we want our scale set to 1 so that that grid is projecting completely onto the pillar. And now this can be the input for the final uh, connector for the lattice sop, like so. And what we should find is, now uh, there's an error there. Ah, that's because uh, we need to be on the points selector here. So there we are. That's uh, more like it. And let me get rid of the... So we should be able to see now let me make sure that we're displaying the pillar as well. And we can see now that the ivy is pretty much conforming to the pillar, like so. So that's the final use of the ray sop. And it's a very useful sop, and it can come in extremely useful, particularly in modeling. I hope you've found that uh, short look at it useful.